Sorry, I forgot to start this recording. By the way, guys, if, if you ever miss your notes in class, you can find it. Even if I don't record the class, it's also on the online participation quiz site. That's for the online students. But if you miss class, you can, or you just want to review some material, all the stuff we do in here is on that website. Shoot me an email, I can direct you to the right place. All right, let's stop at uh, 1.15. 1.15. So a few more seconds, yes, if you don't know. D. Hey, D is right. So I have this cart. That's what I do. This is. So this is the cannonball, and as I'm walking along, I'll throw it up. But the object still keeps going in the x direction. I'm giving this thing as I'm walking along a certain velocity in the x direction. And when I throw it up, it maintains that x velocity, continues traveling along with me. Okay? And so that's why it falls straight back into the car. Now you have this card that's being pulled by an external force. That will wait. It's, it's speeding up, it's accelerating. It fires a ball straight out of the cannon as it moves, just like it did, straight up. Uh, after it's fired, what happens to the ball? Jack's not going to The B3. Stop at uh, 45, 45. Look at y'all, y'all are awesome. It falls behind the cart. This is a little harder to do, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to speed it up right after I throw it. Y'all see that? Let's see, what side of the chicken has the most feathers? I did not do this one. I didn't do this one. Did I? <laughs> Blair, don't give away my punchline. <laughs> You'll say, I don't know. The outside. It wasn't me, I didn't say it. package from a plane flying at constant speed in a straight line. Without air resistance, the package will do what? Uh, Stop at uh, 55, 55. <sighs> Thank you, Akira. Okay, good. It's going to be B. The right answer is B. Um, if this is my plane. traveling along and it drops a package, drops something right here. It just sort of drops it straight down. The plane continues going on straight. The package will fall like that. So when the plane is over here, that's when the package will actually hit the ground. You never see anybody drop a package from a plane. That doesn't happen. But that's what, that is what happens. It does make sense. Right. So, like when you see a plane drop a bomb, for example. <laughs> okay. 
All right. Let's try this one. Let's stop at uh, 35, 35. Right well, ask your neighbor if you're uncertain. Oops, he's right. They both hit at the same time. This is what we were doing with the little box. One drops down, one goes out to the side. They both hit at the same time. So C is right. Uh, this isn't a joke, but it's just sort of an interesting story. The police came to my house the other day. We got these new neighbors, and like, I think they were causing trouble. And so they, they came over to our house, and they were like, so, hey, did you see what's going on? And, but anyway, they knocked on the door, and they said, hey, can we have a quick word? And I said, sure. Velocity. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a true story. So I do have new neighbors. Previous from which ball has the greater velocity at ground level? That is the drop ball or the fire ball. We have one ball that drops down like this, and then another ball that goes off to the side. At the bottom, at the ground, which has the greater velocity? So here and here, which ball is traveling faster? All right, I'm going to stop at 55, 55. Okay, so let's say we have B and C are the big ones, the fired ball, and then neither. They both have the same velocity on impact. Those are both sort of correct. Uh, and I know why you put C, although C is wrong. B is the right answer. I know why you put C, though, because they both have a certain velocity in the Y direction. Because okay, we said they both fall the same amount of time, and so the velocity in the Y direction is going to be exactly the same for both of them. Because they both fall the same amount of time, and they both fall at the same acceleration. However, the first one also has a Vx component, whereas over here, Vx is equal to zero. And so this one over here has not just the Vy, but also the Vx. And when you add those two up, you do the square root of Vx squared plus Vy squared, then that will give you the total velocity, the speed, which will be uh, more than the drop fall. So B is the right answer. Where in this trajectory, start at ground level, goes to ground level, where does it have the least speed? After this, we're going to go back to the quick test at the end of chapter three, so you can flip back if you if you want to wait for the answer. That's fine. But. All right, we're going to stop at 50. 50. Great job, that's awesome. B is the right answer. It's at the highest point of the flight. It has the lowest speed because here I have both Vy and Vx, but up here I only have Vx. 
Vy goes to zero there, so it has the least speed at the top of the trajectory. And what happens to a frog's car when it breaks down? That's not my punchline. <laughs> but thank you, Morgan. Is it you, Morgan? That's it gets towed away. Uh. <laughs> okay, we'll come back to this probably next time. Let's try this one. We did this one very similar to this, okay? So let's do it quick. You want to do it quick, quick, quick. First thing you want to do is find your time required to drop 125 meters. And then you can find your x displacement, dxc. Uh, go about 10 or 15 more seconds. We're doing well. Ask your neighbor. They put. Stop at 305. 305. Okay, awesome. B is the right answer. Um, so here, the first thing I want to do is find what is the time. I want to find the time. In order to find that, I consider my y displacement. I say y is equal to v naught y t plus one half a y t squared. I'm just imagining that I'm dropping something from 125 meters, and I want to know how long does it take to fall that distance. And so this is negative 125. Remember, because this is zero, this is minus 125. If you forget to put that negative, you're going to be taking the square root of a negative number, and you'll say, ah, I can't do that. And then you'll remember, oh, I was supposed to make the displacement negative. So it's not a big deal if you forget that. V naught y is 0, so that whole term goes to 0. Minus 5, that's half of a, minus 10 times a half, times t squared. And so t is equal to the square root of 5, 125 over 5. Oh, that's 25. That's 5 seconds. So that's t is 5 seconds. And then if I want to know x, I say x is equal to vx times t. It's one of our kinematics equations. vx is 10 meters per second. 
times t, which is 5 seconds, that's going to be 50 meters. So I have this object. It goes out a distance of 50 meters. Out here, the time that it takes to fall that 125 meters is 5 seconds. So my trajectory looks sort of like that. Let me do another problem for you. Uh, you wouldn't see one just like this on the test because it requires you to use the quadratic. But it's important. You might see it on the assignment, which I'll probably put up this afternoon and have you on Friday. Uh, and it's important for you pre-med folks, too, and other people that take you know standardized tests with physics on it, but especially the MCAT. You might have to do something like this. Let's say that I have an object that looks like this. It has an initial velocity equal to 20. It follows a trajectory something like this. And let's say that I want to know what is the x position when it falls at a distance 2 meters from above the ground. So I want to know what is this x position equal to when it falls a distance of 2 meters from the ground. Right, it, like it lands up at a, on a shelf or whatever. Okay, um, I'll tell you this angle, it's 30 degrees, and now I want to know, first, find the time. You do it the same way that you did before, well, sort of the same. I want to know the time right here. And so I say y is equal to v naught y times t plus one half a y t squared. Okay, I can now find v naught y. I'll write it up here on the top. If you're doing your MCAT, folks, you need to know your sine and cosine functions for these various numbers because they're not given to you. You just have to know them. And so that's going to be v naught sine of 30. And 30 degrees is an angle you should know. What's the sine of 30? Well, it's either half or 0.86. Okay, so just. Just know that. Uh, it's half. Sine of 30 is equal to a half. And so V naught times sine of 30 is 20 sine 30. That's equal to 10 meters per second. Okay? So that's my V naught Y. I can put in some of my values here. Y is going to be 2 meters. That's where I am at this position, 2 meters above the ground. Here I'm letting this Y naught equal to 0 is equal to 10 times t minus 5 times t squared, where I put in negative 10 for a. This requires you to use the quadratic. Right? As I told you, you won't have to use the quadratic on the test, but on the MCAT you might have to. So I rewrite this, 5t squared minus 10t plus 2, and that's equal to 0. Usually on the MCAT, the numbers are easy to work through, so you can do them in your, you know, without a calculator on the paper. Because you can't use a calculator. Did I tell you all that on the MCAT? Did you all know that? It's true. What? Fun. Right, yeah. And so when you have a quadratic, and you might have to do this on the OpenStax assignment, you say A, B, C, and then if you want to know T, you say that it is uh, negative B, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. You will not have to use the quadratic on the test. Okay, I'm just showing you this because it might be on the open tax assignment where you have to use it, and just for you pre-med folks. So this is going to be negative, negative 10, so positive 10, plus or minus the square root of negative 10 squared, that's 100, minus 4 times a times c. 4 times 5 times 2, that's minus 40. Isn't that right? Yeah. Divided by 2a, which is 10. Right, so that's 10 plus or minus root of 60 divided by 10. And this comes out to have two roots. It can be either 1.775 or 0.225. You know, try to work this out, though, because you can estimate what the square root of 60 is, right? It's roughly 8-ish, right? 8, 7 or 8, between 7 and 8. And so you say 10 plus 7 divided by 10 
That would be 1.7. 10 minus 7 divided by 10. That would be that 0.235. You, know, you have to estimate. Do some estimates if you're not using a calculator. Okay, so now my time. Now I have two roots. They're both positive. So it's not obvious. If one of them was negative, I'd get rid of the negative root. Which one am I going to use? The 1.775 or the 0.225? What do those two times physically represent? Right. They represent this time and this time because both of those times are at two meters. And so it depends on your situation. But those two times represent 0.225 seconds right here and 1.775 seconds over here. So you have to determine that for the given problem. Okay, but in this case, the way I've drawn it is 1.775 seconds. And so if I want to know my x displacement, go back to what we were doing before, vx times t. Uh, vx is going to be 20 cosine of 30, which is like, what, 19 or so, times t, which is 1.775. I get 31 meters. And so this distance right here is 31 meters. Okay? Again, you'll probably have a similar question on your open sex assignment, which we'll have here on Friday. I'll post it at the end of the day. Not other questions, but I can. Yeah. Now that I'm off the